Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley with the Open to Hope Foundation. Welcome to our video. And I am privileged today to be able to interview Mark St. Aubin. Hi, Mark. Hi, Gloria. It's good to be here. And Mark's with the University of Utah Social Work School. I've lost uh, both my parents uh, to death. My father died when I was seven, and then my mother uh, died when I was a 20 year old. And uh, so I've, I've had to process my own grief, and I think it's it's actually been quite a, a, a resource to sensitize me as I've worked with others in grief since that time. I teach uh, MSW students how to do grief counseling and, and grief therapy in my clinical practice class. And uh, then I work with men like... Now what do you see as the needs of men uh, when they're grieving? We liken grief to, to being lost in a car, you know, on a trip, you know, if, if life is a trip and grief is definitely getting lost, you know, so do men ask for directions? <laughs> Typically not. I mean, at least the stereotype uh, is, is that they don't. And so we talk about men, uh, men, men want action, women want interaction. So we talk about that. You know, men want often just, I'm lost, so just just give me the map. And so a lot of times when I work with men, I, I kind of test them out if that's where they're coming from. And often that's the case. I, I say, well, let's look, you know, let's map out grief. You know, what what typically happens? What are the five most common experiences in grief? Or, you know, and then we talk about things that they can do. So men like, you know, often to uh, fix and to have some something I can you know get my hands on that I can uh, you do to affect change in my grief and so we we often give them skills and and uh, give them ways to uh, uh, approach you know some some tactical things that they can do to help their grief and as we do that we often find I find that the men begin to open up and talk about the tender kind of the the more what uh, some grief scholars call the intuitive or the emotional uh, dimension of grief. And so, and kind of staring grief in, in its face and not being afraid to, uh, to, stare, to stare it down and allow ourselves to, to lean into the emotions, to lean into the pain, more uh, masculine approach to uh, to something that is could be seen as the enemy you know we we talk about leaning in and and facing the you know the the uh, the fears that that men have in in their grief and some of the fear has to do with being swallowed up by this thing you know this this strange grief monster you know and and so when it's framed in that way I've found that at least the men that are in the group right now um, they respond with oh yeah yeah I can see how how I have to, when I lean into it rather than trying to escape, that that actually has helped helped me. I think I think often men get to the edge, you know, get right to the edge of of the grief, uh, the emotional part, and what that means to them is that, oh crap, I'm going to lose control. It's going to be um, something that I, I I don't know how to deal with. I'm not comfortable dealing with, and there and. They often don't identify it, but there's there's a there's a fear. To, uh, God, what's this going to do to me if I if I give in even just a little bit into the emotional uh, realm? It's going to swallow me up. It's going to take take over take me over. And so we we talk about dosing, you know, the the emotional uh, dimension of it. Yeah. I think anger is a, a, a more socially you know socially supported. You know something I can, you know I can do it, it it's and and anger as we know you know is often a protective uh, reaction when underneath is the fear and the sadness and the uh, the emotions that that um, that really anger is kind of a, a, a protecting or reactive uh, against or or to insulate us from some of the men that uh, find their way into my group. Uh, they get stuck in the anger and they don't know what what else to do you know and so and the anger isn't isn't often socially supported my advice would be first that's just let yourself be okay with needing to talk with somebody and and number two I guess um, get some resources that you feel like can be helpful um, we uh, 
we don't call ourselves a grief support group because sometimes it's hard for men to feel like they're on the receiving end of, of grief support, but a discussion group. In fact, just get together with, with uh, resources. In your community, if there is a, a group of people to get together and talk about grief, I think that might be something you could try. And uh, also there's some books that are good to read about men's grief and go online and there's some really good websites, one of which is Open to Hope, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, in fact, uh, my grief uh, men that come to see me for individual counseling, I often give them a copy of Open to Hope, actually, because there's a, lot, there's a great section in there about loss of spouse and, and some men who've expressed grief uh, their grief experience and and I like them when we can see um, that we're not different or, or that 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 we have things in common with other other guys who've who've grieved and who are struggling I think that gives us permission to to um, let ourselves heal and and go through the process in a healthy way well thank you so much for being on this video today you're just a wealth of fabulous information and and thanks for all the wonderful work you're doing well thank you so much and thank you for watching this video today and we want to remind you that of open to hope if you've lost hope please lean on ours till you find your own and god bless